So, to kick off this draft, it looks like the pack is pretty unexciting, unfortunately. Um, a rare is a Sylvan Library. Um, constructed playable card, definitely. Limited card, it's okay. I played it in limited, uh, but it's not really what you're looking for to start off a draft. Uh, looking at our uncommons, all three of these are good cards, but all of them are actually multicolored uh, cards. Essentially, you don't want to be playing Flit Hook Boar in just a uh, straight green deck. Uh, so, not really excited to first pick any of these cards, but um, we might have to. Looking at the commons, though, Pacifism stands out as the best common. I think it's what I'm gonna go with. We all, There's also not a ton of white in the pack, so seems like a safe-ish pick. Would rather have started on something more exciting, but we're gonna go with pacifism here to get things going. And once again, nothing really stands out. Uh, there's a ranker, which could be good if we end up in an enchantment based deck just we already have a one enchantment so we could add a rancor and try to go in that direction uh mishra's factory is a solid card raise the alarm is the only white card in the pack but don't really want to second pick it so i think we're gonna go with most likely take the rancor it's a little bit better than werebear um so, alright, let's try taking Rancor out of this pack and see where that takes us. So, alright, so, a few different options here. Uh, Yabi Maya en Enchantress is the card that goes with the two enchantments we already have. So, there's some value into taking that for sure, but the card is not super powerful on its own. We've got a Black Hunden in the pack, which is one of the worst hun Hundens in the set. So not really a card you want to take super aggressively. Uh, Peregrine Dr Drake is a good card, but I think let's just go ahead and take this Yavi Maya Enchantress third pick. Uh, it's pretty aggressive, but the pack doesn't really cry out for anything else here. Um, Alright, so here it looks like the green-white uh, enchantment plan is not going to work out in this pack. Uh, the only card that's basically green and white that I would want to take is actually the artifact, uh, Milliken. So that's an option. Prodigal Sorcerer is a powerful card, so is Young Pyromancer. Um, but most likely the safest pick is to take the Milliken, just because we don't know what colors we are. Uh, Eyeblight's Ending is a good card, but let's take the Milliken. We've also cut green and white pretty hard, but it looks like other colors are coming more than green and white at this point. Um, there is an Ayabi Maya Enchantress, but that's not really as strong a card as some of these uncommons here. So we're seeing Phyrexian Gargantua, just a huge 4-4, draws us some cards. Merfolk Looter is also in the pack. Um, I think the Gargantua is just super powerful in this format, so we're going to go with that here. But now, actually, we've gone full circle, and there's a, a white hunted in the pack. So, it's pretty attractive to take that and to just kind of go back towards the enchantment plan, but this could definitely end up in a train wreck, um, just because we're kind of a little bit all over the place here. But we did pass a black hunden. Um, yeah, alright, I guess, I guess we can take the Hunden of Cleansing Fire. I 
It's one of the better cards in the pack, so we'll we'll go for it. And okay. So this is where things really start to get interesting. Um let's look at the red and blue cards because they're the best cards in the pack. Mana War is very good. Um there's a couple of very solid red cards. Burning Vengeance um can be a very nice card in the right deck. But Mana War is probably the, the card we want to take just because um, it's the only good blue card and it's, it's a very good blue card. So we're going to take it kind of setting ourselves up to be a little bit all over the place. And now we actually see a Black Hunda and inter interestingly enough. So the question is do we want to take it? Can we take it? Um, but if we're not taking this, then what, what, are, what are we doing in this draft? We're, we're kind of, uh, messing around a little bit, but I think we just want to take the Hunden. We've already got one Hunden. The black one isn't, isn't the best one, but it's got its moments for sure. So we're going to take it here. And at this point, we're kind of setting ourselves up to be more than two colors. So that's going to mean we're going to want to value cards like the Scoured Barons more highly. So it's probably going to be what we're taking. Gaseous Form is another card that is worthy of some consideration, but it's not a card you typically want to be playing. So let's try to steer clear of that. And so, yeah, considering we're setting ourselves up to potentially go into an enchantment deck, we're just going to continue taking the lands. There's not really anything better for us in the pack. Um, and if the enchantment plan doesn't work out, we can always audible to some sort of mediocre uh, two-color or three-color, just good stuff-ish deck. So take the extract for darkness here and yeah there is a gaseous form in the pack but in case we end up red we're just going to continue taking the lands just to stay stay flexible here staying flexible early in the draft definitely has benefits because even though we're trying to be enchantments and this looks like a complete pile uh, because the packs didn't really break the way we wanted them to, we've still got options. And immediately, Vassar the Dreadful um, stands out as a haymaker in this pack. So, we, we already have some black, some solid black. We don't necessarily need to go crazy with this deck. Vassar is a very strong card. It's the best card in the pack. We might not end up playing it, but we've already got a Phyrexian Gargantua, which is double black. So going to triple black at that point isn't all that much of a stretch. So, yeah, I mean, this is the card I'm leaning towards taking. All the legendary cards we possibly can have, just take them all. So, all right. Um, Field of Souls is a pretty powerful card, but we don't have a lot of stuff that interacts that well with it. There's a Scoured Barons that we don't want to take this early. There's a Monk Idealist that works with the enchantment plan. But right now we're kind of trying to focus in on black, I think, as our, our main color. So that would kind of lean us more towards this him to Torak and possibly abandoning some of these other cards we have uh, taken early, like the Rancor, the Yami Mai Enchantress, that kind of stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and just grab this him to Torak. And okay, so there actually is 
another Hunden in the pack. Um, Hunden of Life's Web. And since we've already got two Hundens in our pile of cards, we could def there's definitely value to just simply taking another one. Um, and that's kind of what we should probably do here. Um, just play all the Hundens we possibly can and then supplement them with some black cards. That's kind of where we're at at the moment. But um, we shall see how things evolve here. So we've got uh, Factor Fiction as a nice card draw spell. But since we're playing with Hundens, I don't know that we really need to prioritize card draw. So here, it the correct pick may just be to take another land considering... We're already three or four colors at this point. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to grab this jungle hollow. And, hmm. So, got a few different options here. There's the Thornwood Falls in the land, a Havoc Demon, just a big dude. Um,. Commune with the Gods is actually a reasonable consideration just because it finds us our Hundens, it finds us our big creatures, and is a pretty good card in general. Um, so, we can probably just go ahead and take this Commune here. And oh wow, so now we're seeing a second copy of Hunden of Cleansing Fire. So these Hundens are legendary, but this one is one of the more powerful ones, and we could we could play two in our deck. Uh, we don't want to draw two, obviously, just because they are legendary. But I think it's, there's just too high of an upside. Um, with this card not to take it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Instantly slamming. Instantly slamming this Hunden. We've, we've now assembled four Hundens. And, oh my gosh, there's also a Future Sight in the pack. I don't think there's any way we can cast that Future Sight with our deck, unfortunately. But this card is so unbelievably powerful. I wish I, I wish we could take it and play it. Uh, but I think we're, I think I'm just going to make the conservative pick and take this jungle hollow. Um, I really want to just be able to play these enchantments. That's basically the goal at this point. So we're, we're already basically in four colors and we're, we're kind of, we, we might end up playing red even if we, if we see the red Hunden. Uh, God forbid we see, we see that card. So... I'm pretty sure we're just grabbing a bunch of lands at this point. Uh, this pack is pretty uneventful. We could take a Monk Idealist. Um, although, yeah, we're probably not going to end up playing it. Grab this Jungle Hollow. And, yeah, the Dismal Backwater. All of the lands, these... These lands are going to allow us to cast our spells. Uh, and that's all That's all we really care about. We now have four, five, nine lands. One of which is red, actually. But got a ton of lands. Alright, so here we probably just want to continue on the enchantment theme. There's actually a pacifism. And we're lacking some early removal, so pretty sure that's just going to be the pick here. Um, Civic Wayfinder is a mana fixer, but we don't really want to be messing around with Regal Force either, so just going to take the Pacifism out of that pack. And now we're seeing actually another Pacifism. And do we want to go all the way up to Maelstrom Wanderer? That's kind of greedy. Uh, 
but yeah, it's probably a little bit too greedy. Um, but that card is pretty. It's a pretty exciting card. Just like cas cascading into multiple Hundens seems nice. Um, but I think we just want to make the conservative pick. Take the pacifism. Uh. We already have two pacifisms. Hmm. Well, we don't. Why not? We're gonna take them some mails from Wanderer. I want to try the card out, and it's just a huge, huge thing. If we pick up another red land, we can play it basically for free. So, all right gonna take the Annihilate, I think, just because it's a super powerful removal spell. Now we're picking up a bunch of removal to help shore up our deck in this third pack, which is good. Um, the card we're really missing is the Red Hunden, because it's actually the best Hunden of the bunch, but we haven't really seen it. So, gonna grab this Annihilate. And, alright, here we have a giant solifuge. We're not really going to be able to play that. In fact, there's not much here realistically that we're going to want in this type of deck. But, we might end up playing this Blight Soil Druid if we want another ramp effect. Because just having a turn 2 mana creature into a, a Hunden on turn 3 is powerful. So we're going to grab this card. And, yeah, similarly, here we could take the Prismatic Lens, because producing any color that we want to is going to end up being pretty important, just because we've got four different colors, possibly five different colors in our deck. So, I'm going to take this Prismatic Lens pretty happy to, to have that in, in, in the, our pile of cards. And yeah, now we're seeing Mana War, which is definitely a, a solid option we could go with, but I think just in order to enable us to play this Maelstrom Wanderer, we could take yet another land. That's an option. Uh... Mana War is a pretty powerful card, though. Trying to think in terms of do we have enough win conditions? I guess we'll find out. But uh, gonna grab the Mana War here, and all right, it looks like we we might not end up with the Red Hunden, unfortunately. But not too much stands out. Just gonna grab the Swift Water Cliffs here, and wow, there's a third mana war not sure we're even going to play them all but just going to grab it um we've got three bounce effects we're going to move um we're going to move our lands to the sideboard here just a second and so we're we have a better idea of what we're looking at and it looks like we're probably going to have enough playables so we also don't really want any of the cards here, so I don't mind just adding these lands. We're going to play them all, even though they all come into play tap, which is definitely a disadvantage. Well, we might not play them all, but we'll play a lot of them at least. Um, and we don't really want these other cards necessarily. Uh, Phantom Monster, sure, we'll take a Phantom Monster. And... All right, I don't. I just don't want to play against Young Pyromancer, so I'm gonna grab it, put it in the sideboard, um, and yeah, we, we don't need any more red lands at this point. We've got plenty of red lands to be able to cast our Maelstrom Wanderer, and yeah, I mean this deck is gonna be something else. Uh, have not yet drafted a, a deck this crazy in Eternal Masters yet, so pretty excited to go ahead and build this. 
we'll definitely look at the mana base um, in a minute to tr try to get a feel for what we're doing there, but we actually have so many lands that it should be possible to have at least reasonable mana, as crazy as that is. So we're just going to go ahead and start cutting cards that don't make a ton of sense in our deck. Um, and I expect the Hunden of Life's Web to actually be one of our more important cards. It can serve as a win condition for sure. Um, do we want to play Rancor in the stack? Maybe. The Monk Idealist is also an interesting one because we our, our enchantments might or might not end up in the graveyard, but we have a couple ways of putting them in the graveyard, like Commune with the Gods and Extract from Darkness. So that's worth being aware of. I don't think we need three Mana Wars just because we're not really a tempo deck. We're going to use them more to offset what our opponent's up to. Um, and yeah, the Rancor just isn't necessary. We're not playing a ton of creatures, and some of the ones we are playing are Mana Accelerators. So, let's see here. How do we feel about Urborg Uprising? Eh, might be okay because we want to rebuy a card like Maelstrom Wanderer. We probably don't need this Shoreline Ranger. So this is down to 25 cards. Let's go ahead and start adding some lands and seeing what the deck is going to look at once the lands are incorporated. So I'm going to put the red lands off to the side since we're not sure how many of those we're actually going to play since we only have one actual red card. But all of the other lands we're pretty likely to want. So we're going to add those. Let's see what Magic Online is telling us. Um, okay, we're definitely not adding any mountains to our deck. So just going to go ahead and start counting out. This is only 14 lands, of course, but we've got six black producing lands just with with the tap lands plus two swamps what that puts us at eight black sources and this would be five green seven green um and then four white so yeah like we're we've got colors this is only 14 lands we're gonna add at least a couple more lands to our deck so we're on the way to having the right uh, colors, the right, a good solid mana base at least. So Blight Soul Druid also produces a green mana. We've got three accelerants here. Um, we probably don't need Peregrine Drake. This is a card that personally I love. This, I just being able to cast this and then cast something else is really nice. But we've got a bunch of other stuff to do on turn five, which is good, but the games are probably going to tend to be more long and drawn out. And this card is just a five mana, two, three flyer, and we need to cut something. So if we cut that, that means we're looking at probably one more cut from this. So we're going to look to add in a couple of red lands here. So let's see how many green sources we already have here. One, two, yeah, we've got a lot of green, so I'd rather add in the, the swift water cliffs and the bloodfall caves. And we're gonna probably want if we decide to play this hymn to Torak, which we might not, uh, but if we do, then we might want more swamps, but this might be the last cut, the Hymn to Torak. Our deck's just going to plan on going long, and we want cards that are going to be good if we draw them later in the game. Uh, but we'll consider this one while we're adding our, finishing up our, our mana base here. So, if we add one more swamp, what does this look like? pretty crazy that we have more non-basics than basics, 
but that'd be only two swamps, four, five, six, no, sorry, three swamps. Um, that's going to put us at five, six, ten black sources. That is actually enough to cast him to Torak. Um, as far as green, we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven green. That's plenty for green. We might even be able to cut this forest. And then we're probably going to want to add another white or two. So let's do that. Because if we add two more white, we've got four, five, six, six white. So we want even another white, another cup of white even. Um, and we may not need this island. Let's see, one, two, three, four blue. So yeah, we do need it. So if we cut some of this stuff, what is, what does this look like? Let's see here. Um, we just cut a plains. We cut, we're cutting the hint of Torak since we're going down to nine black sources, which is fine. I think we, we're going to need to do that just to make our mana base a little bit better. Um, and, okay, so we've got four, five, five blue, and four, five, six, seven white. So, if we're only playing five blue, we might even want to cut a mana war because we may not be able to play it early. So that would be one reason to play a him to Torak over mana war. Um, also, this Milkin doesn't produce any of our colors, unlike the Blight Soil Druid and the Prismatic Lens, which is a little bit of a disadvantage. We still probably want to play it, and we st still probably want to play this other Mana War, but we do need one more cut, so... It's a pretty close decision. I think, though, we don't even need to play the Hymn to Torak since we've got a Hunden. We'll board it in in the slower matchups. And this Orborg Uprising is also cuttable, but I think we may want it just to have a way to bring our creatures back since we don't have that many legitimate win conditions in the deck. Uh, all right, let's, let's, or, sorry, we need to cut one more land. So, let's see, four, five, uh, five white. So, maybe we can afford to cut one white or even one black. If we cut a black, that's going to put us down to eight black, which isn't optimal, but it, we may have to do that in order to be able to do what we want here. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight black, and seven white, or would we rather have nine black and six white? Uh, all right, let's try this. We're going to submit it. Hopefully, the mana works out. We get to play some Hundens, and the deck ends up being as fun as it looks. Alright.